This is the Nikon 200-500mm f5.6 e super telephoto zoom lens. I've been shooting with the lens for about a month and in this video I'm going to share my short term review. Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Photo, I'm Bill Ferris. In this video I'm sharing my short term review of the Nikon AFS 200 to 500 millimeter f 5.6 e ed vr super telephoto zoom lens and let's get started with the measurables earlier i used this tape measure and this scale to determine the measurables for the nikon 200 to 500 millimeter lens let's take a look at the results i started by measuring the weight and the weight of the lens with the lens cap and lens hood is 5 pounds 6.5 ounces, 86.5 ounces. The weight of the lens with the lens hood but no lens caps, the way you would use it in the field, is 5 pounds 5 ounces, 85 ounces. If you were to remove the lens hood and shoot just with the lens itself and no caps, the weight is 5 pounds 1 ounce, 81 ounces. And if you were to strip it down for the lowest weight option, for shooting handheld in the field by removing that tripod collar. The weight is 4 pounds, 10 ounces, 74 ounces. The length of the lens without the lens hood or lens caps is 10 and 1 half inches, with a diameter of 4 inches across the front lens element and a circumference of 13 inches around the front lens element. Adding the lens hood adds about 3, 3 and a half inches to the length for a total length of 14 inches at 200 millimeters focal length. With the lens hood and the lens extended all the way to 500 millimeters, the lens is 17 inches long. And without the lens hood extended to 500 millimeters, the lens measures 13 and one half inches long. There you have it. Those are the measurables. At five pounds, five ounces for the lens with the lens hood and the tripod collar, this is certainly no lightweight optic. But if you're going to shoot handheld, you can strip off this tripod collar and shoot just with the lens and the lens hood, getting the weight down to about 4 pounds, 10 ounces. Now let's take a closer look at the controls. The controls for the 200 to 500 are clustered along the left hand side at the rear of the lens as you're looking at it from behind the camera. There are four switches in this cluster. We'll take a look at them from top to bottom. The first switch is the autofocus control switch. The left hand setting M slash A, the lens is in autofocus with the camera with instantaneous manual focus override available as an option. If you want to shoot strictly in manual focus, flip the switch over here to the right and then you're in manual focus. The second setting is controlling the range of distances the lens will use to find focus on your subject. This left hand setting full means the lens will search from its close focus distance all the way to infinity. If you're shooting subjects that are quite distant from 6 meters or 20 feet to infinity, flip the switch over here to the 6 meter to infinity setting and you'll speed up your autofocus acquisition a bit on those distant subjects. And the bottom two controls are for vibration reduction or VR, with the top switch simply being an on-off switch, off on the right and on on the left. I keep it in off uh, until I put the lens on the camera and power the camera on with the camera on, engage VR if I want to use it. I turn the VR off before I power down the camera. And then there are two VR compensation modes, sport and normal. In this sport mode here on the right, the camera and lens will recognize panning as part of the natural motion of the image you want to record and will also uh, allow your camera to uh, function in the continuous high burst mode with the sport VR engaged. There's a fifth setting here on the lens and that's the lock 200 switch. Uh, with the switch engaged, you see there's an amber color showing. That means that the lens is locked at 200 millimeters focal length and cannot be adjusted to run through the zoom range. Simply disengage that switch and let's take a look and listen to how that uh, zoom ring works. As you can hear, no odd popping or clicking sounds to indicate uh, poor quality of construction in that area. 
the one uh, criticism I would have is the rather long throw range to get from 200 to 500 and back again with this zoom ring it's a solid construction rubberized surface real comfortable to use but that throw range is not the most comfortable motion if you want to go from one end of the zoom range to the other quickly focus ring is towards the back of the lens right in front of this control cluster it has a really loose action let's take a listen to that and I will say, despite the loose action of the focus ring, I've never had an instance yet where I've accidentally brushed against this focus ring to lose focus on a subject. And then there's one more control I'd like to talk with you about, and that is how to remove this tripod collar from the back of the lens. And we're going to loosen the collar lock knob. It's not hinged, so it doesn't come completely off just by opening up a hinged ring. Instead, once you have that lock knob loosen, then what we're going to do is rotate the tripod collar so that this indicator with the carrot is aligned with the second indicator right here. And with those two aligned, <laughs> yeah, we can take this uh, tripod collar right off. And then with them again with them aligned, they slide right back on. And so these are the controls for the Nikon 200 to 500 millimeter f 5.6 e zoom lens. Well, with the measurables and the controls review taken care of, let's talk about the build quality of the lens. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I've owned the lens for about a month, and in summary, I would describe the build quality as very good. The lens feels solid, it feels hefty, in my hands. And to address a question that's come up in a number of online forums about weather resistance, Nikon did add this rubber gasket to the back of the lens adjacent to that F-mount flange where the lens attaches to your camera body. Also at the front of the lens, there's a rubberized ring that surrounds the front lens element. And together, these features provide a measure of weather resistance when you're out doing photography in the elements. Well, all right, we've taken care of the housekeeping about the 200 to 500 millimeter f5.6 e but let's get to the point of the video and talk about the quality of the performance of this lens by looking at some of the more than 2,600 photos I've taken in the last 30 days. As we take a look at the first photo in this set of images, I'll also give you a link to my online photography blog where you can view full-size JPEG versions of these and other images uh, in an online written review that I've prepared on this lens. I've used the lens primarily to shoot wildlife, nature, and some sports. So this first set of photographs of American coots uh, swimming around in a pond in Raymond County Park near Kachina Village, Arizona. I want to call your attention to the incredible detail that this lens captures. As we zoom into a full frame view, you can see good focus, crisp focus on the eyes, fine detail in the feathers. And this is first and foremost the immediate impression that 200 to 500 millimeter f5.6 e makes when you start using it. This is a really sharp lens. It is superior to just about anything else in its price class in this focal length range and is fairly comparable to some of the professional quality zoom and prime telephoto lenses that Nikon manufactures. Here are a couple of photographs of a dark-eyed junco uh, that I also photographed at Raymond County Park. Again, as we take a look at the 100% uh, crops of this image, check out the focus on the eye, the detail in the feathers, and also the uh, wonderful way that this camera renders bokeh. In fact, this next set of images of this Eurasian eagle owl. Uh, this is a, a bird that I, a raptor I photographed at the Arboretum at Flagstaff during a raptor show and the Eurasian eagle owl was just sitting there very calmly with uh, quite a large crowd of visitors gathered around oogling and, and eyeing, being impressed as was I at this uh, gorgeous, gorgeous raptor. And check out the detail as we zoom into a 100% crop of the eye. You can actually see my silhouette uh, in this eagle's eye, or excuse me, in the owl's eye, uh, you can see my reflected silhouette in his pupil. And uh, here's another bird from that raptor show, a peregrine falcon. And again, we'll do a 100% crop on the eye, and again, you'll see my silhouette reflected in 
the bird's pupil. I also use the lens to do some nature photography, including photos of the moon. And so here are a couple of photographs of the moon in a waning gibbous phase and a waning third quarter phase. And I, we'll take a look at 100% crops with this again and the same story. Just check out the detail, the crispness of the image, the, the quality of the rendering of contrast, and uh, the absence of chromatic aberration. The lens design uh, deals with chromatic aberration very well and whatever chromatic aberration might be recorded in an image is easily dealt with with the click of a button in Adobe Lightroom. As I mentioned, I have used this lens to shoot some sports, so here are a couple of photographs from a college football game I photographed, and I would say this illustrates probably the greatest a weakness, if you will, of the lens, and that's its light gathering ability. At f5.6, this lens is two full stops slower than the f2.8 professional 300 and 400 millimeter prime telephoto zooms that Nikon and Canon produce, and is a full stop slower, for, in, for example, than the 200 to 400 millimeter f4 that Nikon manufactures. And so, in an indoor arena such as this, where the light level is not good, I had to shoot at ISO 8063, that's high plus one third of a stop on my Nikon D610, just to make a decent exposure shooting at 500 millimeters, f5.6, one two hundredth of a second, okay? I was only able to shoot between about one two hundredth and one five hundredth of a second at this game, and as you can see at those exposure speeds, you're just not having any chance of freezing the action of a college football game. So if you want to use this lens for sports, bear in mind you're going to need a well-lit situation, an outdoor arena or a professional indoor venue with a high lighting level. And as we take a look at a photograph of this A Bears squirrel, which I took from about a 30-foot distance, I was on a path in a forest, the squirrel was up about 30 feet on a branch on a tree and a couple of other photographs. Let me talk about uh, two other items. One is autofocus speed. This is uh, something that gets a lot of speculation about the 200 to 500 millimeter lens in online fora. And I would say this, the lens is not nimble. It's, it's not a fast, immediate autofocusing lens. Uh, I will also say this, it's been effective for me. And I've gotten good results following moving animals, birds, and also shooting sports. But one of the challenges that I have to keep in mind to be fair to the lens is that I'm also developing my own skill set working at such long zoom focal length ranges. Before getting this lens, my longest lens was a 70 to 300 Nikon zoom. And now I'm shooting in that 300 to 500 millimeter focal length range quite regularly. And it takes a real skill set to do that effectively and to use good technique to, to frame a shot, to follow uh, moving subject to maintain focus and to apply good technique to achieve all those results. It's not just on the lens, it's on me as a photographer. And so uh, that's why as re after this one month short term review, uh, I am leaving the book open on the autofocus performance of the lens because I'm still getting comfortable with my skill set in this area. Well, there you have it. Impressed, I think, is the one word summary for my evaluation of the Nikon 200 to 500 millimeter after one month of ownership and use. Now, before we end this short term review video, I'd like to talk with you about one other item and that is Oben's CTM 2500 carbon fiber monopod and the VHR2 tilt head. I ordered these when I pre ordered the 200 to 500 millimeter lens, knowing that. Hand holding a lens of this size and heft would be a challenge for me and wanting something with the flexibility of a monopod to provide the support that I felt I would need. And I have to say, this has been an outstanding combination for me. I love shooting with this Oban monopod attached to the Nikon 200 to 500 millimeter. In fact, every photo that you saw in this video was taken with the 200 to 500 millimeter mounted on the CTM 2500. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm Bill Ferris, and I'll see you next time on 5-Minute Photo.